Hey, welcome to Podcasting and Platforms. Thanks for watching. Make sure you go download the audio podcast at podcastingandplatforms.com or you can grab it in any podcast app because we expand on some of this in deeper ways. But I want to talk today about what's your metrics of success? What is important in terms of you feeling successful about the effort and time and money that you're putting into your podcast? The number one metric of success that everybody picks is downloads. Of course, how many people are listening to me? I started my podcast five months ago. Am I as big as Joe Rogan yet? No. Uh, and it's going to be very difficult. So you have to measure your success because you will never have as many downloads as you think you deserve, and you'll never have as many as you want. So it's kind of a cruel mistress in making that what is the metric of your own success in terms of all of this met of this success, right? For some people, for me, for instance, the metric of success with The Chris Spangle Show is how much community am I building around this podcast? This podcast over the last 10 years has changed my life, quite literally. I met my wife there. There have been five marriages, including mine, that have come out of the We Are Libertarians podcast, which is now The Chris Spangle Show. Uh, we have had 75 different podcast hosts. We've had multiple pool parties and live shows, and it's been a great excuse. And, and the group chats that you talk, you become best friends with these people in the group chats because you are working on a shared project together that you're passionate about, uniting around a common interest that you have. Again, that thing that you're nerdy about that maybe you don't connect with a spouse or a coworker on but you found these random strangers on the internet that also love this thing. And so you now are working on the shared project and they become your best friends. That is a great metric of success for me. For some people, the metric of success is influence in their personal network. It would be very difficult for you to call up somebody in a, who's a thought leader in your industry and say, can I have lunch with you? They're probably going to be too busy. But if you offer them the opportunity to come on and talk about themselves for an hour, then all of a sudden you have a relationship that you've built with someone who's at the top of the heap in terms of your career vertical. And it can be a great way to start expanding your influence because all of a sudden you've got dozens or hundreds of people listening to you and having conversations about the thing that they're interested to and their career goal, career goals as well. So it can be a great way to build your personal influence in, in your career. And all of a sudden, you're getting you're getting invited to come speak at these conferences because you're the authority talking about the niche in your business. For some people, the metric of success is income. How much money are you making off of your podcast? We'd all love to make a million dollars an episode like Joe Rogan. But for some people, they're happy getting enough sponsors and patrons to cover the bills. I'm one of those people. I cover the bills for the We Are Libertarians podcast network that supports 15 different shows. And I make a little extra income off of that. And when we sell advertising, I make a lot of extra income off of that. So it, it has given me back the things that I've invested in terms of income. And when I think about the clients that I work with as a podcast consultant, every single one of my clients has paid my fee through advertising. And they have moderate audiences, right? Like, But the point is that they're talking to people in their niche. So you take somebody who does an Indiana construction podcast, like my friend Nate Lelly, he has several hundred listeners, but they're the right listeners. It's targeted. And those hundreds of people that listen to his podcast, the people who are advertising know they have a better chance of talking to somebody that will buy their product than if they just put it on a radio station and spend thousands more and kind of spray and pray that they're hitting the right target audience. So you can build an asset that will help you offset your income in a fairly short amount of time as you start to build out your podcast and your platform. So there's a lot of different reasons that you uh, will assign success to your podcast. It can't just be downloads. You will be disappointed. So you have to think about different reasons that you want to do it because there will come points where it becomes difficult and you want to quit. And you have to think about the things that you get out of doing the podcast. What value do you get out of doing your own podcast? This time and effort must give you value back. And that's why I always recommend picking a topic that you're eternally interested in and something that you want to study and uh, in communities that you want to be around those people because it's a long slog over time, but it's truly rewarding, especially if you have determined what is the right thing for me to determine if I'm a success as a podcaster.